Good afternoon. My name is Marcy Strumgren, and you've tuned in to Just the Facts. I have in the studio today Art Johnston, former school board member from the 4th District in the city of Duluth. Welcome, Art. Yeah, thanks, Marcy. Great to be here. Good to have you here again. Um, Art and I want to talk about a subject that I'm sure um, many of you maybe not even think about anymore, um, but it affects the students in the 709 school district, but it also affects you as the uh, taxpayers who keep funding this school district by these levies they keep asking for. And I want to go back to 2018, and I have the Think Kids. Now, that's their theme all the time. We are supposed to think kids. I want to read just a little bit of this, and then Art and I are going to discuss this. On November 6th, voters are asked to consider reviewing and increasing education funding in Duluth. The proposed questions take into consideration community priorities and goals identified through Think Kids. Community survey results gathered this summer and Duluth's world's best workforce plan. They include class size and educational classroom technology with teacher training and curriculum support. Now there are three things on here that I won't go into right now, but um, they all are just covered in that paragraph I told you about. Now, it goes on to say, if the renewal doesn't pass, schools will lose about 3.3 million in local education funding and class sizes would rise significantly, significantly over time. There would be slow or no updates to classroom technology. The proposed referendum re revenue authorization would be for 10 years. And it goes on to say about the estimated um, cost per your valuation of your, uh, your property. Now my issue is recently the school board decided in a four to three vote that they would take $700,000 from the classroom and put it into paying down uh, our indebtedness for the red plan. Isn't that correct, Art? Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay, so I know you have some information that uh, you want to share that we can uh, further enlighten our audience to find out, okay, why did they do this? Uh, well, first I'll go back and just to give a little bit of history. Uh, the local levies, the local levy which goes to the schools, back in 2010 before the long range facility plan was about $10 million per year. Uh, last year, before the referendum passed, that went up to about $32 million, or increased by over th almost 350%. I remember when they passed the Long Range Facility Plan, they said that it would not raise taxes other than for one year. Obviously, that has not been so. Now, adding the referendum that just passed, uh, starting, which is going to start hitting our tax bills now, now the amount, the local revenue, the, the local taxation uh, went from 32 million, it's gonna now be, I believe it's 37 million. So it went up about another $5 million per year thanks to that referendum. Uh, they also, they wanted to raise it up more, but that last option didn't pass. Only the first two options passed. So, uh, yeah, so we're now up to about 36, 37 million dollars per year when, remember, it was 10 million dollars back less than 10 years ago. So it's been an enormous uh, increase in local taxation, um, which, of course, nobody much talks about, but uh, that it is somewhat connected to the, the bonding. And do you want me to talk a little bit about the whole financing of that? Yes, if you uh, would. Okay, well, most school districts in the state, uh, they finance their new buildings. And again, the new buildings are all, all new built. They were finished, I believe, in 2012. Um, and most, in fact, not most, all school districts finance new buildings by levying property tax. Uh, well, in this case, uh, some of course, they said they weren't going to increase the property tax other than the initial. It was supposed to have went up 50%. It was supposed to have went from $10 million up to $15 million. This is a total amount that comes in from the taxpayers of the, for the, in, in the school district. 
Okay, now it's up to what, 36, 37 million dollars now. Uh, so, you know, what happened? Uh, on top of that, obviously there was, there wasn't, um, there was some dishonesty going on at that point. Uh, went from, the, the levy is uh, almost tripled, if you count it, they did say it was going to go up to 15 million, now it's up to pushing 40. Um, so something happened. Uh, something happened is one, they had to pay off these debts. Another thing that they, they did, when you have a $300 million building project, it's a lot of money, it's a big project. As far as I know, it's the largest in the state. Um, and uh, so not only did they did have our property tax increased a lot by almost 300%, depending on how you measure, uh, they also are paying a lot of that money, that $300, the debt payments for the $300 million are coming out of the classroom. And you've talked to me many times, and I, when I was on the school board for eight years, and I tried to bring awareness to the people of Duluth that um, not only has our property taxes went up, the amount we're paying for a significant portion of that money, if you look at the debt payments, it's about about four hundred million dollars when you include the debt payments and the interest and all that. It's actually actually closer about four hundred fifty million now. Um, but on a you know three hundred basically three hundred nineteen million was what the actual cost was. And now of that amount that's being paid, uh, the they financed the plan by pulling a lot of that money out of the general fund. So not only did our tax increase go up by almost 300% from this $15 million up to nearly 40 now, but they're also paying uh, up almost $4 million a year out of the general fund, which is we are the only school district where uh, we are paying for our buildings out of the general fund. The general fund is money that's supposed to go to pay for teachers, pay for health benefits, pay for school supplies, pay for smart boards, pay for supplies, all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to go to educating the children, and that includes teacher costs, of course. So here we are, the only school district in the state that's paying a significant portion of our debt payments out of the classroom. Um, and why that's kind of important is we can uh, talk about the way the, the plan was originally set up. Overall, it was supposed to be paid off in 20 years. Now that's been extended several times. And, uh, and anyway, over that 20 years, there was, they were officially gonna pull $79 million out of the classrooms. That was over 20 years. So look, that's about, about $3 million, two or $3 million per year. It's a significant amount of money when you look at when they're talking about lowering class size and whatnot, as you, as you read in their thing, kids thing. Obviously the superintendent, obviously the school board were not thinking kids because they're pulling that much amount of money out of the classrooms, which is unprecedented and as far as I know unheard of. We are the only school district doing that. When I've talked to people in the Minnesota Department of Education and the Minnesota School Board Association, they said, oh my gosh, where were the teachers? Why didn't somebody complain about this money being pulled out of the classrooms? Well, obviously in the city of Duluth, the teachers bought the red plan hook, line, and sinker, and they did not care that money was being pulled out of the classrooms. They knew about it. I've told them about it many times. I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with the union president saying, hey, this is not right. Everybody agrees it's not right, but the teachers have refused to say anything about it at all. And instead they say they're thinking kids and that we care when the fact of the matter is nobody cared at all when we were pulling $79 million out of the classroom. Now to add uh, insult to injury, this new, they just went through, I think you asked me about, the, the new referendum, or the new refinancing, uh, they call it restructuring now, they changed the name from refinancing to restructuring. Sounds nicer. Yeah, right, that's thanks to the new CFO, you know, Kathy Erickson. Uh, anyway, uh, that's going to add another, uh, 
we haven't got the final figures. The school district has said another $7.5 million to that figure, so we're going to be up to uh, $86 million is going to be pulled out of the classroom to pay for these debts. So when you look at the referendum, they were saying thinking kids, then they went back and refinanced and pulled another $7.5 million out of the classroom to pay for one particular debt. I can talk more in detail about that if you'd like. Well, <laughs> there's a lot there. Um, I'm not sure we're uh, going to get that all covered in, in one half an hour, but I'm going to go back to this statement. If the renewal doesn't pass, schools will lose about $3.3 Are we going to have to listen to this repetitive think kids nonsense come this fall so they'll have that other $3.3 .3 that they need to go and pay down the debt? I mean, in my thinking, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is like a cyclical problem that isn't going to get any better unless us taxpayers keep funding Think Kids initiatives just to pay down this enormous gargantuan debt. Right or wrong in my thinking? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the debt is horrendous and we all want to put, give the best opportunities for our children. I think everybody agrees with that. Oh, sure. What's missing in Duluth is nobody wants any accountability. That money is going in there, another $7 million per year, basically, or another actually $3.5 million per year. And uh, nobody is asking for any accountability, like, hey, where is this money going? And of course, there's nobody on the school board. The school board is completely brain dead. The superintendent has them all buffaloed into thinking this is a good thing. They call it something like think kids. They obviously are not thinking kids. Uh, the, the, this is, this is uh, yeah, it's, it is really uh, shameful that nobody is asking any accountability for the administration. And that's been going on for a long time. I don't see this being ended. Uh, I suspect that uh, with coming up the new election, the same people will get elected and the superintendent, even though he said he's going to be gone in a year, he will be here probably forever. Well, he can't find a job anyplace else. Nobody wants him because of his history record, and, and I'll go on record and, and stand behind my statement. Um, okay, there were three, this vote was three to four. One who we thought would have done a better job in our position is up for election this year. But for the most part, there were a couple of people asking questions, I think surprising to you and I who it, who it was coming from. So um, they have been grappling with and trying to get their, get this so that they can understand it. And so they were firmly against taking that $700,000 out but when you have a 4-3 split, then the ones that aren't thinking, and I think we could name them as Alana, um, uh, help me with... Uh, Joel Lawful. Joel, and then uh, the... Rosie Loeffler Kemp. Rosie Loeffler Kemp, and the other one was the one, he's up for election this year. Uh, David Kirby. David Kirby. So those four voted in favor of taking the $700,000 out. And the other three, Sally Trinka, she's new on the board, is she not? Yeah, she was elected two years ago. And then the other two would have been? Uh, Nora Sandstead and Josh Gorham Josh voted Gorham. against the refinancing. Right. And Nora is not going to run again. And Josh is on for another two years, right. correct? And Sally right. Trinka will be on for another right. two years. So... This is what you've got here. They, they aren't thinking kids, and they certainly aren't thinking taxpayers, and they certainly are not thinking in the future because this is not the end of it, folks. It's going to continue because they're never going to have enough money. Besides which, I don't know what the bleed out is still, but when Art was on the board, he gave a pretty good uh, report fairly often about how many students we have lost, and we certainly have lost a lot since this whole fiasco of the red plan came through as a matter of fact uh, you know we build them uh, schools and they'll come but that's not the case they're going every place else and that's money coming from your state and federal which is about 13,000 per student so the, the 
district doesn't have that money either coming in. And we've got empty classrooms. I take community education classes, and there are many, many classrooms that have no name of a teacher, and they're papered over so you can't look into them. And so there are many classrooms that have all that technology that's now obsolete that we put into for the Red Plan, and there's no students in those classrooms. Well, I mean, it's obvious when you look at it that, and nobody is looking at this, unfortunately, but with our 8,200 8, students that we have, which is much less than we had when we started the Red Plan, because a lot of the students left because of discussed with the Duluth schools, uh, we way overcapitalized considering the number of students we had. $319 million is way too much money for a school district. Uh, which is about 24th size in the this, in this state and uh, for only 8,200 students. I do have to make a correction though, Marcy. The, okay. The, um, the financing of this refinancing thing, uh, as usual, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but it's not quite as simple as you made it. Uh, the, the scheme <laughs> before that, uh, First of all, according to the school district's figures, and I've got the, all the reports of the certificates of participation, not bonds, certificates of participation, remember that word, and we can go back to that, I hope. Uh, I have all the breakdown, that's all public information. You can call up any stockbroker and he can give you the breakdown of that. Um, uh, this was only one bond, we have about eight bonds and certi mostly certificates of participation that funded this $300 million, total of you know, about $450 million with interest. Uh, uh, and this was the 2009B, that was what it used to be called because it was issued in 2009. The first payment was in 2011, and then that was supposed to, uh, uh, the last payment was supposed to be 2000. 30, which is about 20 years from when it was sold. Uh, so what they did is they didn't refinance the whole thing, which I have advocated all along. There's nothing wrong with refinancing because we remember at record low interest rates now. Uh, so what they did, instead of taking the whole thing, we still have about $240 million left to pay in principal on it. It's been, been being paid now for 10 years, but you know most of the early payments are principal. We still have about $250 million in principal after about $350 million if you count the interest. So they took one small portion of that, which is a 2009B, which was originally sold for, um, let me look here real quick, was originally for $39,000, uh, $39, about 40, I mean $40 million. Well, that wasn't the biggest chunk, but it was one of the ones. So again, that was supposed to be paid off in, 10, in, in 10 year, 20 years. So what they did is they took just that one and decided to refinance it. So what really happened? That's more complicated than you said. They pushed it back another four years. So now instead of being paid off in 20 years, it's going to be paid off in 24 years. And uh, the interest rates of the original bond was running around overall average was about 4.4%. The new interest rate on it is about 3.6 overall. I got all the numbers right here on that, so that's there's no question of that. So that sounds like that sounds like a good deal, right? Because the interest well, rates sorta. are lower, but they've added another four years to the payment schedule. So overall, the total payments to go back to pay off the remainder of this debt, which is remember started about 40 million dollars, now is about 26 million dollars principal remaining. Uh, that's going to add another 7.5 million, according to the school, to the total payments. Um, but where, why did they do this? How did they buffalo the school board, the four school board members, into paying for? Uh, because what they did, this is a uh, something that's you know balloon payments and the whole remember the whole housing crisis that happened in 2008. Uh, when everybody had the variable interest rates, well, what they do, this, is a, this goes how it happens all the time, particularly on school financing, is the first years, the first couple years interest rate is only uh, uh, 2%. And then it goes up at the end of the year, which is in 2034, it goes up to 5.5%. 
Uh, so hmm. what happens is the first few years interest, the payments are low. And then they keep building up very steadily. So the total increased money pulled from the general fund, because 100% of this is being paid from the general fund. None of this is being paid through, through property tax. 100% coming from the classrooms, from our children's education fund that comes from the state of Minnesota to, to pay for education, not buildings. Uh, so it's gonna add another, according to the school district, $7.5 million to those payments. $7.5 million more pulling out of the general fund. Now, uh, the numbers don't quite jive over what I've seen that the stockbroker said it was sold at, but let's use the school numbers of 7.5. So as you add 7.5 to the $79 million currently planned to be pulled out of the general fund to pay for these debt payments, that comes out to be, uh, what's it come out to be, 80, 86 million dollars now gonna come out of the general fund. So they're pulling seven million dollars more out of the general fund. And why did they do that? How did the school board get, get snookered? Because the first couple of years they're saving $700,000. But then it balloons up and gets more and more. And then as the years go by, they're gonna be pulling more money out of the general fund. Now, of course, who knows, maybe by then they will decide to refinance again. This is a trick that governments use, that they have bonding authority uh, because they, they have really low interest rates to start with. You can see it, every, every bond COP that we've had, the interest rates for the first couple of years are really low, then they balloon out up to about 5%. Now, uh, it sounds like we went from 4.5% down to about 3.5%. Okay, that's, that is good. But when you add the extra years on it, we're paying $7.5 million more because the 5% the interest is on the last payment. So that's building up right now. But we won't allow to see it that until uh, 20 years from now is when we're going to be paying it. So it's really pretty insidious. It's a trick that uh, taxing authorities or bonding authorities have. They do it all the time. Now, uh, why could we have done, this is what I've always been advocating, we should have done better. Uh, the school financiers are not good. The Moody's Financial Services has rated the Duluth School District BA2, has dropped from BA1. That is a junk bond status. That is our bond rating right now. and. How close to junk bond is that? That is in junk it bond is status. Junk. It I is. mean, depending on junk bond status is kind of a vague term, but okay. most people say it's right down really near the bottom. And why is it so low? One, we've lost so many students. We have no reserve funding. Uh, uh, there's two other big reasons. Uh, uh, three is that most of these things are financed with certificates of participation, which are more risky, and they hide financing as one of the things that a lot of districts, particularly states like Illinois and New Jersey, refinance everything with certificates of participation because they hide their indebtedness. And the third one is that these things are not guaranteed by taxes. These are, they're coming out of the general fund. That means that the school district at any, any year, they could say, hey, I'm not gonna pay these anymore. And chances of that happening are, are, are pretty small, of course. But because of that, our bond rating goes down. Consequently, our interest rates go up. Even though three and a half isn't real bad, but remember, other school districts now are getting, inter, are getting bonds for into the, the mid twos. So hmm. we're paying you know, mid threes. And yeah, it's better than what we had uh, 10 years ago and interest rates were a lot higher. But we should have got a better in interest rate than we could. Of course, we should have. If we really wanted to think kids, we would stop pulling money out of the general funds totally, refinance the whole $240 million we have left at that. And if we cleared that up, our bond rating would go up to uh, AAA or bond rating if we started paying for these debts by taxation. And if we would get a lot lower interest rates and we would be able to lower our payments overall, we would lower our taxes and we would save this $3 million a year coming out of the general fund. And of course, the teachers, where are they? Hey, they don't care. As long as they got brand, brand new fancy schools, they don't care. And as uh, long nobody's, as oh, And remember, uh, remember something you've heard me say before, I'll bring it up again. We had $12 million in change orders that went in to that that nobody has cared about. We've had no audits. This is very unusual for a, for a district this large 
having no audits on the building I'm talking about. Yeah, we have these little play audits about by, um, by Wifley about they go through and say, yeah, our, our books balance. But they say right in there, they've not, nobody's done any, any uh, auditing of the red plan on that $12 million. Nobody yet knows what it was for. So here we have, nobody cares about the $12 million in change orders. Nobody cares at all. The school district tried to, of course, they went after me because I brought it up. Oh, yeah, right. Art Johnson, let's get rid of him because he brings up difficult questions. The superintendent was part of this. The superintendent was superintendent when this big, the big one was signed. Now they say they're thinking kids when they basically sold the, the farm out already. Now they're trying to cover it up by again raising taxes they're, they're, this is all band-aids this little uh, the, the refinancing of 2009b was nothing but a band-aid luckily we had three board members i was surprised that they voted no because they they seen through the smoke and mirrors and but it's going to continue on and on and uh, nobody there's nobody on the board that has a clue about accounting time value of money and the superintendent and the new CFO, Kathy Erickson, is depending on a majority of the board being ignorant about financing. So they can say they're doing something when in fact they're doing nothing and we're going backwards. We're spending another $7.5 million according to their own figures that are gonna be paid off on debts out of the classroom, not just from taxation, but out of the classroom. Well, I think that really sums it up quite well. It makes me understand it a little bit more, and I'm glad you corrected me on that. Well, then, the losers are our children, as usual. Of course, the other losers are the taxpayers who have believed that this, and, and we have to pay for this. This comes mailed, and we get one for each voting member in our household. So they can't just send one to two people. they got to send two or three to our house. So wasting money, uh, well, nobody Basic, honest. Basically lying, I'm going to use the word that too many people don't like to hear, but it, it, basically lying to the public and our, our students are the ones that are really suffering and, and it's really sad and I'm glad you were able to come in and, and hopefully people watching will understand what's really going on. We got a school board election coming up this fall. We need some good people to run. Even if you've been intimidated in the past by the machine that operates in this area, we need some good people to run for the school board. That is crucial to get this straightened out. Would you agree? Yes, it is crucial. The school board, all the, everything weighs on the school board. We can complain about the superintendent as being incompetent and doing smoke and mirrors when it comes to money. Yeah, that's true. but. Uh, who is he accountable to? The school board. The school board keeps renewing his contract. They give him an extra $5,000 to get his PhD, which he's never got. Maybe he can't get his PhD because he doesn't know anything about finances. Who knows? Uh, but he still hasn't got it after, what, eight years of giving him $5,000 a year. That's the longest somebody's been uh, standing up to get a PhD that I know about. $40,000 uh, that could go into the classroom. We've got to wrap this up, Art. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy.